Hey guys, Monica Lopez here. Welcome to week four, day two of the push. I'm really excited about today's topic. It's fun to me. It's social media. And basically, I'm just going to pour all of my knowledge into you guys, all the tools that I use to create eye-catching posts, whether it's a video, whether it's a photo, whether it's a quote, whether it's my next challenge group or business opportunity call. You want to make sure that what you're putting out into social media world is eye-catching because you want to grab your reader's attention, your followers' attention, your friends' attention. And so what I'm going to share with you guys are a couple of tools um, that I have kind of put together for you as my arsenal of, <laughs> of apps and websites. But before we go into that, let's talk about what our end goal is okay our end goal is basically to stop scrollers right it's so easy we know to go onto Instagram Facebook and scroll 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 or go through a news feed and yeah yeah yada 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 and but there's one person that puts out this one photo or this one quote or this one thing that just catches our attention you want to be that person you want to be also the person that your followers log into to find out about you know is there somebody out there that every single day you want to hear from them and so that is our end goal. Uh, we want to stop scrollers and second, make a connection with them, with whatever we're saying. Um, I loved how Sari Amante put this on our team call the other day. She says, you know, the way you know if you're adding value or not to your posts is once you put something out there, you stop and ask yourself, and? And what, what's the purpose behind what I'm saying right now or what the photo I'm putting out there? Um, and you know, guys, adding value can come into so come can come in so many ways. It doesn't mean each post has to be a long, drawn out, passionate, um, heartfelt post, or a, you know, you breadcrumbing your story. It can simply be a one liner that shows how funny you are, or or what you find funny. Um, but nonetheless, just kind of step back and say. Does this have value? Is this going to tell a little bit more about me or about my story? Or is it going to give somebody a way to connect to who I am? Okay. And then the fourth thing is avoid spamming. We want to avoid spamming. We want to avoid being like every other person, right? Or even other companies out there on social media promoting their products. Um, we don't want to be that join me, uh, click here, buy from me, ask me how. We don't want to be that way. We This business really thrives on connections, on personal connections that you make with people out there. And so you want to put your personal touch into everything that you do. You want to brand yourself and not the product. So avoid spamming. All right, so with that said, um, I put together a couple of do's and don'ts that I think are just important to keep in mind. The first is to stay away from blurry photos. It's, it's just that simple. It's, it's, it's much more pleasing on the eye when it's crisp, clean, um, and it just kind of shows that you took a little bit of time to get it right. Uh, this was very simple for me to find because I put the same quote in Google and I found one that was low quality and I found one like a couple um, spaces down, uh, perfect quality, very crisp and clean. So it's just a matter of picking the right one. If you pull up something on Google and you realize that it's not great quality, go find another one. All right. So simple enough. No blurry photos. No busy photos, and definitely you don't want to publicly post your link. Those things scream salesperson. As you can see, the, the, the image on the left just looks busy. It looks um, like a billboard. It looks like somebody, you know, just trying to sell, sell, sell. Where on the right, it says, I can, you can. And it's basically showing, um, you know, if anybody that's been following me for a while knows my mother of three, I struggle um, with loose skin, stretch marks, the works. I've gained over 70 pounds in my pregnancies. And I'm telling them if I can, they can. Um, and that's something that's going to stop a fellow mommy out there and say, man, you know what? I really want to hear what she has to say today. Or what words of motivation does she have? Okay, so try to stay away from busy photos and definitely don't post your link. That should always be done privately. Challenge groups. The one on the left, there's nothing wrong with the information that's on it, but I can tell you two things wrong. Um, it just looks like an advertising, um, just, you know, informational advertising. And second, what's being branded here is a 21 day fix. Where on the right, you can see um, there's no mention of the 21-day fix. In fact, I urge you guys to get creative of the name of your challenge groups. This one I called a fitness mentorship. And the biggest um, piece of gold on this post is that it has my face on it because I'm branding 
me. I am branding what I have to offer. If I branded a 21 day fix, then I would be like 400,000 other Beachbody coaches out there. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're posting about a challenge group, you don't have to get super busy in the actual image that you're using. You could use all that info that's on the left. You could use that in the body of your post, but for the eye catching visual aid that you want to put out there to get in, um, new customers to join you. You definitely want to have your, your face and something just simple and straightforward. Okay. Business opportunity. Um, I, I just, same concept, you know, you want to have your face on it here. You can have, you can see Stephanie Chico. It's just her and it says, make your fitness, your business crisp, clean. She, if you follow her story, you know, she's also a mother. Um, and she's defeated a bunch of uh, postpartum odds. So you kind of connect with her way more than the photo on the left that just says, join me. You can earn money, get a discount, look good and work from home. Ask me how. See that there's no connection made there whatsoever. Transformation. Um, the biggest no, no that I see on transformations, especially on Instagram, cause you can't actually like click on the photo and zoom in is a very busy collage of results. Those results on the left are just as impactful as the results uh, that you see in the right by Christina, but you can't tell them because they're so small. And uh, uh, also what I also see in this is that Christina's transformation photos just tell a story, right? It shows a pregnant mom and the postpartum little infant and then how um, she's come along um throughout the years and is like super duper fit so those things tell a little bit more of a story than just flat out um side by side photos so side by side photos still work um if you're like for example promoting a transformation post a program that you just completed from start to finish but i would stick with one pose at a time if you've got two really great poses fantastic save it for another day um, you don't have to divulge it all out at one time. You can sprinkle it out little by little. So pick one for one post and then use the other pose for another time. Shakeology. Okay, so I think a big no-no is either posting just your shaker cup or just your bag of Shakeology, especially this photo here where it's really dark and gloomy and it doesn't make Shakeology look all that great. But then you hear, have you at the right, Lily Rubio, I think we could, we could, um, title her the queen of Shakeology. All of her shakes look so delicious on social media. Um, and so here she is with her face, again, branding herself um, and holding this delicious eye-catching shake. And of course, in the body of her post, she's going to post there that it's a Shakeology and she's going to give her recipe and she's going to tell her followers why she drinks this shake every single day. Never mind that it looks delicious. Um, so I see this as so much more impactful than just putting a shaker cup or just putting your bag of Shakeology or putting uh, your blender or whatnot. Okay. So um, those are a couple of do's and don'ts that I figured I just should throw out there to you guys. Um, so here are my most used apps and sites. For fonts and photo edits, I use Fonto, Alias, PixArt, Word Swag, and Camera Plus. Videos, Splice, and Pick Play Post. And then via PC, pickmonkey.com and canva.com. All right, guys, so I'm going to end this video right here, and then I'm going to um, post right after this tutorials on two of the apps that are here. One is A-List, because this is the one that I use to kind of overlay photos, um, and I get that question so many times from, from coaches um, private messaging me, asking me, how did you create that overlay? And then the second one that I'm going to post is a video app called Splice, which is what I use pretty much for all of my videos. There's also a webinar that Christina's done in the past on PicMonkey, and I will also post that for you guys, just to kind of give you um, some arsenal in your library of tools um, and webinars to keep for yourself um, for future use. So stay tuned and join me on the next video. Oh, how do I stop recording? Bye.